Hello everyone, welcome to another solutions video. In this solution, we're going to be writing a little simple greeting program. For inputs, we're going to be taking two inputs, um, the user's first name, their last name, and then we're going to output a little greeting message for them. As you can see, just like before, I did the first four comments on the title of the program, the author, the date when the program was created, and the purpose of the program. So let's set up our input. What I want to do is separate their first name and last name as two separate inputs. To hold that value, we're going to create a variable. You can name it whatever you like. I'm going to call it first. Since it's a variable, we're going to put the label on the left and put an equal sign in the middle. And then we're going to grab our input by using the input function. Inside the input function, we can write a string message. This is called a prompt for the input function where we're giving the user the instructions when they use this program. And here we're just gonna write that they should be entering their first name. All right, um, let's create a variable for the last name and it's gonna be exactly the same. So you can just copy that line over and your variable, change your prompt inside as well. Okay. Whenever I use an input with instructions inside the input statement, I like to leave a little space there for better usability. And I'll show you what that means. So when I run this code, as you can see, that message entered the first name there. And you can see that there's a little space before I can type in, let's say, Mr. So it just gives a nicer usability before we start entering. Notice how the instruction for entering the last name didn't come up because um, the input function halts our program or pauses the program because it is waiting for user input at this section on the interpreter and it will just hang out, wait until we pressed enter. So I pressed enter, now it's executing line eight. It's now, um, I'll put in the instruction enter the last name and I'm gonna type out my last name, press enter there. Notice the program didn't do anything because we've only done the input. We haven't done the processing nor the output yet. Now for this programming programming solution, we're not gonna need a process, so we're just gonna leave that empty. Let's go to the output. Let's write a print statement. I'm just gonna write a basic print statement that says hello. And then we can write whatever message we like for this greeting one. Uh, we can just say welcome. Hold in there. First and last. So when we write a generic message without any variables inside the print statement, you can just create a string, which is a data type that is trapped by either single or double quotation. So if you start with a single quotation, you should end it with a single quotation. Or if you use a double quotation mark, you should end it with a double quotation. Um, my advice to you is that you keep it constant in terms of what you use. I like to use single quotation mark because I don't need to press shift on my keyboard. All right. Now looking at line 14, if you notice, I have three items inside the print statement. The print function is very, very interesting because it can take numerous inputs and it will output them in order onto our interpreter. So in line 14, it is going to output welcome and on the same line beside it, we'll add an extra space. We'll put first then put a space and put last. So I did this little space here on purpose because a lot of new programmers We'll add a space thinking that the comma is not going to really add anything. Just going to put this variable and this variable onto our output. And let's see the run. So let's create, I'm going to write my first name again, which is Mr. Last name Park. And we're going to get hello. Line 13 has been outputted right here. Whereas line 14, we outputted the message welcome. Then we have the value of the first variable, which is Mr. And then the value of the last variable, which is park, and there is now two spaces there. That is because when we use a print statement, the commas will always automatically add a base for us to separate these different values. 
Now, this is going to get a little annoying. So we will learn how to deal with this in a later unit. For now, what I want you to do is just live with the fact that commas will add spaces between different values separated. And we'll learn how to format our outputs later. But for now, I don't want you to worry about how your output looks, but rather just focus on how to organize your input, structure your process, and show the output. Thank you for watching. Classy.